Hi everyone, welcome back to Art of the Part. Today we're going to continue on with our SOLIDWORKS assembly discussion. We left off on uh, a couple different basic mates. We brought in these different dumb solids and we converted them to native SOLIDWORKS parts and then we put them all together. So now we're in a situation where I want to be able to move some of these components, but if I click, hold, and drag on these, you'll notice that they're locked in place or they're currently fixed. So I have to move forward with this by breaking up the subassembly. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So you'll notice here in the feature tree, we have the completed device and riser assembly. That's what we saved. And we're, we see that little yellow uh, Tetris piece with the blue square. And then underneath it, we have the uh, part file for the riser, but we also have this selection of um, different components inside of the subassembly. So if I open up the arrow here, you'll notice that I have all these different chunk vice uh, components inside of it. So I have to break those up because they still have the little lowercase f, which means that I can't move them around, and I won't be able to access them unless I dissolve the subassembly. So what I'll need to do to get rid of this like little folder, if you want to think of it that way, is right click on this little icon for the uh, sub-assembly of the chunk vice grip, and then we'll um, select dissolve sub-assembly. So again, we'll right click on the icon inside of the uh, feature tree, and then we'll select dissolve sub-assembly. And when I dissolve that sub-assembly, all it did is it removed the folder that it was currently in, in, encased in. So I still have to deal with these fixed parts because I can't move them apart. And what I'll need to do now is I have to unfix or float the remaining components. So we want this vice uh, riser to be fixed itself because that was the first part we brought in. We mated this uh, vice base already so that can remain fixed. So as I move down my feature tree, I'll notice that the third part through the last part can actually be floated. And I need to access them in such a way that uh, I can now apply mates. So I need to select the third part inside the feature tree, hold down the shift key, and then select the last part in the feature tree. And while still holding the shift key, I'll right click and I'll select this option for float. So when I select float, you'll notice that that little lowercase f that was next to the name or the icon in the feature tree now has a subtraction symbol there, which means I can click, hold, and drag these however I see fit. And we obviously want to get to a point where these are all locked in place, but we don't want the vice to be at the zero point. We want to be able to hold parts within it. So I have to go forward and now apply new and different mates. So I'm going to select the mate function, so we're familiar with that little paper click, sorry, paper clip icon. And the first thing that I'm going to do is probably line up these sliders in line with the central piece here. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to do hole to hole, just like how I did with the uh, vice base. And I'm going to select the hole that's in the center of the slider. And I'm going to select the hole that is in the center of the vice base. And what's going to happen is we're going to make those in such a way that they're concentric, but I still have to lock this down uh, within the top plane. So you'll notice that as I move, I can click, hold, and drag. I can move this side to side, but it's in line with that axis. So it's on axis and axis. But to make this flat, all I have to do is select one of these faces and then select one of these faces. And that's going to make a co uh, sorry, consent, uh, sorry, coincident mate, um, but it could also make, uh, make a parallel mate if it was a little bit underneath, like if there was a gap there. Um, so either one of these would most likely work. And then I'll hit the green check mark. And in this instance, we only want the two degrees of freedom because I want to be able to slide this back and forth. I don't want this fixed in this position forever. So I want to be able to slide this back and forth. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to select the center hole here. And I'll select the center hole here on the vice base. And then once again, I'm going to select one of these faces and then one of these faces and hit the green check mark. And you'll notice that I can move this one left and right as well. All right. Now we're going to actually use the, um, the vice grips themselves. 
So then I'm going to select these inner holes and select these pegs on the vice grips. So I'll select one of these inner holes. So I'm selecting the surface of it and I'll select the surface of the uh, peg here. And you'll notice that we're in a situation where I need to access that other uh, peg and hole. So again, I can click hold and I drag, <laughs> moves around a little bit, this away from the part so that I can access this hole and this peg once again. Hit the green check mark. And the last thing that we want to do is we do want this to be fixed to the uh, vice slider itself. So you're just going to select this top face on the vice slider and then the bottom face on the vice grip. So I'll hit the green check mark, and now these will move in tandem with each other. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So we'll select one of these uh, whole surfaces. We'll select the surface of the peg, and then move it away. Select the hole, or sorry, select the uh, peg surface, and then I'll select the hole of the uh, vice a slider, and then I'll select the top face of the slider and the bottom face of the vice grip. So again, these will now move together, but they still have some movement in them. And they're not fixed in place. I'll also mate this rod. So I'll select any one of these cylindrical surfaces and I'll mate it with the center hole right there and hit the green check mark. All right. So I think we're in a good spot where I could end this video and then in the next video we can go ahead and start talking about advanced mates. So let's go ahead and hit the green check mark on that mate and then file save as, rebuild the document, and we'll just save it over the one that we're working on and save all.